Well, there's a lot of confusion, to be honest, not just amongst the members of the public, but also news editors, uh, journalists and uh, uh, media doctors, too. Well, Boris Johnson, as we know, last night unveiled his roadmap for how the UK is going to get out of lockdown. But it has certainly divided the nation. A huge amount of debate about this new five-level alert system. A bit similar to the terrorism threat level, or if you're being less kind, uh, the Nando's, how hot is your chicken threat level. Uh, Dr. Hilary Jones is here. Hilary, where do you stand on, on this one? It feels like the whole country is divided. Personally, I thought this seemed like a very sensible, well thought through approach that allows the government an opportunity to change their mind if the R level goes up. But there has been a lot of criticism. Where do you stand? Yeah, I think the criticism has has come about because there's some mixed messages. There's some confusion. Well, there's a lot of confusion, to be honest, not just amongst the members of the public, but also news editors, uh, journalists and uh, uh, media doctors, too. Um, we haven't had the detail. That's the problem. Uh, we we what we've heard is that lockdown will be eased in small ways and it will be closely monitored over the next few weeks and months so that we can see which stage comes next, depending on the reinfection rate and the number of cases, which is absolutely sensible. It'll be monitored by a biosecurity um, uh, centre, I understand, a bit like the uh, the terrorism alert that you uh, referenced. But I think as long as there's clarity on what is allowed and what isn't allowed, we'll be able to move forward sensibly. What effect will lifting these measures have on the spread of the virus? Well, the risk is that, 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 that we know the virus is only transmitted from one human being to another. And, and the more human to human contact there is, the greater the risk of more viruses being transmitted, more cases happening, um, more mortality, uh, NHS overwhelmed again and a second peak. So it's really important to maintain that social distancing by reducing our contact with others. Only going to work if we can't work from home. Um, we can exercise more because it's thought that being out in open spaces is much less risky than being in enclosed areas. Um, people can drive a little bit further uh, so we can get more distance when we go to the beach or we go to the forest for a walk. Uh, we, can, uh, we can exercise more. Uh, but we still need to, to maintain that social distancing, which is all important, and practice good hand hygiene and, uh, and all the things that go with that. OK, great. Well, lots of questions pouring in for you, Dr. Hillary, over the weekend on the hashtag AskDrHillary. Stephen King, wonder if it's that one, has messaged to ask, are older people inherently at greater risk of infection than younger people? They're certainly more vulnerable to the consequences of infection. Um, there's no doubt that the mortality that we've seen predominantly affects the elderly, not exclusively, um, but of course elderly people have more pre-existing conditions such as heart disease, such as chronic lung problems, such as kidney, liver disease, uh, diabetes. These things all make them more prone to the severe consequences of COVID-19. But it seems that people who are elderly with no pre-existing conditions are also more vulnerable to the serious consequences. Having said that, there are many people, even in their uh, 90s and over a, an age of 100, who've recovered. So it's not uh, a death sentence by any means just because you're elderly, but you are more vulnerable. And that's one of the reasons why they are in the vulnerable group asked to self-isolate for uh, the duration until it's safe to come out again. Uh, Clara Balufu says, what standard of PPE is supposed to be worn when treating patients with COVID-19 in a normal ward, not intensive care? Well, the minimum that you would expect uh, NHS workers uh, in that capacity uh, to have would be certainly an apron. Uh, you'd expect them to have um, uh, gloves. You'd expect them to have a mask of, of good quality, of hospital standard quality and uh, eye protection. I think those are the, the minimum four things that you'd expect and you'd want high quality, um, uh, good standard uh, materials that have been approved um, by the local hospital or other authorities. And Roy Keith has sent this in. Hello, Roy. Hi, Dr. Hillary. How long approximately do droplets containing the virus stay in the air 
after a, a infected person has coughed or sneezed. Thank you. Well, scientists and researchers have attempted to ascertain that, um, to be specific. Um, they don't hang around in the open air very long at all. Um, in closed environments, particularly when there's artificial, when there's ventilation, um, we know that droplets can carry uh, some distance and some of the heavier droplets can last for a few minutes in the air, which, which is why uh, there is an issue with lots of people together in an enclosed space. Why, it's why one of the reasons why gyms uh, have been closed uh, and why we need to have that social distancing of two metres or more in shops, in supermarkets, um, uh, pharmacies, anywhere that you're in an enclosed space. So uh, droplets can be carried by the air and by air currents, and the less the air current in an enclosed space, the safer that space becomes. Dr Hillary, thank you so much. If you have a question for Britain's most trusted medic, then you can use the hashtag AskDrHillary on any social media platform. Uh, or you can go to thesun.co.uk forward slash Dr Hillary or visit talkradio.co.uk. We're back tomorrow answering more of your questions. Hills, have a great day. And you, Dan.